In today's video, we'll be learning how to use Line Render 9000 to create line art and cartoon renders. This tutorial will also cover the workflow and lighting options to get you started so you can create your own cartoon renders with Line Render 9000. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Palmy and this channel is designed to help you master that studio so you can create your dream renders. In today's tutorial, we're going to be covering this awesome product called Line Render 9000. I have been playing around with it for the past three to four weeks of discovering so many magical things about this product. And we're really going to be focusing on creating those cartoonistic renders and how we can get that started. This is literally a beginner's guide that's going to get you started and creating these amazing cartoonistic renders. Now, most of us are normally focused on realistic or photorealistic renders with Dash Studio, that's absolutely fine. But there are some of you out there that want to create those cartoonistic renders. And I believe this product is going to help you. And I'm going to show you how to use this awesome product that's going to help you to get those desired results. So you're literally going to be able to create something like this. By the end of this tutorial, you are going to be able to create some magical, magical renders. So let's dive into Dash Studio and get started on this uh, tutorial on this amazing product, Line Render 9000. Here we are inside Dash Studio. This is not a scene from my comic book or anything like that. This is just a scene I've created specifically to show you the capabilities of Line Render 9000. So when you install Line Render 9000, we need to activate it. We need to tell Dash Studio to not use the NVIDIA IRA render engine to use the scripted 3D light render engine so we can activate and use Line Render 9000. And how do we do that? So what we need to do is we need to click on our render settings tab here. Where it says editor, you can see where it says engine here. I want to click on this drop down list here and choose scripted 3D light. Go down here where it says render script. I click on that. And here we select, click on the, the drop down list here and we select line render 9000. And we get a few more options here, render options and line render 9000 options. We don't need to worry about these options because we are going to control all of that within the line render 9000 script. So where do we find all the line render 9000 scripts? Now the, the problem with that is it's located in different areas. So some of the options are located in camera presets. Some of the options are located in the scripts. So if I go to smart content, some of them are in like lights and, and uh, lights uh, presets, sorry, camera presets, presets here, presets like some of them are in uh, scripts. And the best way I found to just collate everything in the in one area is to untick this section here, filter by context in your smart content tab. Click on all files. Then where it says enter text to, to filter by in here, we're going to click in here and type in LR9K. And that's going to bring us everything in one area, right? So every every camera setting, every script setting is in one area. Instead of being in different sections, it's all in one area. Highly recommend you do that so you get everything there. So the first thing we want to do is add our cameras into our scene to give us these wonderful outlines as shown in this, these, these kind of examples here. These are the outlines, right? We're going to start with the outlines. That's what we want to start with first is we're not going to worry about the colors that comes later. There is a, a method to the magic and that is we're going to start with the outlines first. You get your outlines right. The rest of it becomes easy. The rest of it is simple. Coloring it in becomes very simple and straightforward. You need to get the outlines right. That is the that is where you will spend the majority of your time is getting the kind of outlines you want uh, for your particular render. So to do that, we need to add our cameras. And what we do is um, this section here where it says uh, this option here rather LR9K black and white. We just want to double click this. Do not worry about these other cameras. These will be added when we double click on this. So I double click on this and we'll take a couple of seconds for them to load the cameras. So in the scene tab, you'll see we've got some cameras here. Now the only cameras we need to be concerned about are the Fresnel reflected V, the shadow opacity cam, the tune two tone cam and the main camera. So the Fresnel uh, reflected V cam camera here it's going to give you the uh, details, right? It's going to catch those extra outlines, the extra outlines, the detailed outlines. So we need that camera there. The shadow opacity cam is quite self-explanatory. It's going to catch those shadows. Shadows are important in your renders. Please do not um, think shadows are not important. Shadows like create mood, atmosphere, um, give you those definition in your characters. It's very, very important shadows uh, as you'll find out as we go through the tutorial. 
The tune two-tone cam, say that three times fast, um, gives you the tune uh, kind of effect. So it gives you the kind of like tunistic effect of your characters. So we need that camera. And the main camera here gives you the main outlines of your your kind of like character or the objects in your scene. This is what we're going to be focusing on. This is like, this is what we're going to be focusing on in the first part of this tutorial, the main camera, because it's very, very important to get these outlines. The other camera I would definitely add is this one here, the edge blend camera. So I'm going to double click that one. And that's going to add it to the bottom here. What that does is gives you more detailed outlines for different sections of this scene. Um, which is very similar to the Fresnel ref reflected VCAM, but this one gets other outlines that sometimes this Fresnel misses. So we're trying to just cover our bases. We're trying to get as much kind of outlines, the detailed outlines we can of every object in the scene so we can create these very cartoonistic kind of like um, renders. So we've added the cameras. That's absolutely amazing. Now what we're going to move on to is something called color IDs. Now this is the main thing. You understand color IDs, Line Render 9000 becomes the most powerful tool you have probably ever used in terms of creating your cartoonistic renders. Color IDs, let's go and explain exactly what that is. Uh, I'm going to click on my surfaces tool here and then I'm going to um, use the example of these trousers. Here. I'm going to click on my trousers of this character and I'm going to click on the surfaces tab here. And you'll notice that there are like three material zones. There's the pants, there's the tags, and then there's the waistband. Each of them are outlined because I've uh, t uh, highlighted, because I'm using the surfaces tool. So in this situation, the waistband here is, is uh, hidden by his jacket. So I do not need to be concerned with that waistband. If the, the kind of jacket was not there and I could see the waistband, I would put a color ID for this. But for this uh, tutorial, we are only going to be putting color ID for the pants and the tags. So I'm gonna click on the pants material uh, zone here. And then I'm going to click where it says enter text to filter by, I'm gonna type in LR9K. Now this color ID is added when you, we, when we earlier, when we went to the render settings and we went to script 3D light and we went to render script here. As soon as we do this, this color ID kind of parameter is added to every surface in the scene. So every, item object you've got that has got a material zone or a surface will have this LR9K color ID added, which is great, which is what we want. We want that control. We want to have that control over the outlines. This is the kind of core concepts of the color ID is you want to use colors that are contrasting for each kind of like section or zone of a particular clothing item. So for example, the pants, I'm going to click on here and I'm going to choose red. Right. We don't want to choose white because white is, is, is not going to help us get the the, the color we want, uh, the, the lines we want. It doesn't help us. We need to choose contrasting colors. So this is all red now. Now the color ID does, the LR9K color ID does not change the color of the clothing or anything like that. What it does is it basically, the when we go into the script render settings, it uses the color ID to figure out where these outlines are supposed to be created, where these outlines, like these outlines here, of the, say for example here, the sleeve here, I guarantee you there were color IDs used here. So a separate color ID was used here and a contrasting color ID was used here to create this line here between the two sections. Otherwise, if the same color ID was used here, like red and red, you would not see this line here. It would just be one complete kind of section where the camera would pick it up as one, one basically one material zone. So if we go to the tags here, I'm gonna choose an opposing color. So an opposite color, a contrasting color, for example, like dark blue, All right? It's clearly defined, very distinct, bright red, dark blue, very distinct colors. Cool. So let's stick with that for now. Um, let's go to the LR9K script. Now, obviously you would do this. Um, you would actually, you would do this for each particular part of the clothing. So um, for each part of the clothing, you would go through and you would choose your color ID. I'm going to come back to this and show you the procedure, the correct procedure on how to do this the kind of workflow. So let's go to the script now, LR9K auto render script. Double click that. So let's jump into the script to show you how it works very briefly. It's very simple, very straightforward. So destination is basically where do you want the, the files to be saved when we hit the render button. 
So I want it in my LR9K folder here. I've just got a sample folder here. Uh, what do you want to call it? File prefix. So let's call it LR9K tutorial because that's what it is. Um, and then you got the file type. So there are three file types to choose from. Because we're going to be doing composite, we're going to be doing composite, uh, composite our our renders, our renders. We're going to put it into our favorite folding software, whatever that is for you, GIMP, Photoshop, like whatever you use. Um, you want to choose PNG or TIFF for the transparency. Uh, you don't want to choose JPEG. So I'm going to choose PNG because I prefer that one. But if you want to use TIFF, use TIFF, right? There is no right or wrong. Just choose whatever you like. And then here we've got a render passive section. So let's uh, focus on this camera section here. So these cameras here, Tune Two Tone Cam, Main Camera, the Fresnel, and the Shadow Opacity Cam are have been imported from here, from uh, what when we added it earlier by double clicking this LR9K black and white. Now you'll notice that the edge camera is not in there. Let's add that camera now. So I'm gonna click Add, and then on the right hand side I can add the camera. So I click on where it says Camera, and I'm gonna choose Edge Blend. And I don't want to use the NVIDIA IRA render engine. I want to use the uh, Line Render 9000 engine. For now, we're, we're not going to focus on the Fresnel. So I want to untick this. We're not going to focus on the Shadow Opacity. We're going to untick that. And we don't want the Edge Blend. We're just going to render these two first. The two-tone two -tone cam and the main camera outlines. So let's just jump into the main camera section just to go over some of these settings. Some of them are self-explanatory. Um, enabled, if you want it enabled, tick it. If you don't want it enabled, untick it, as you can see. Camera, choose the camera you want to do the render pass on. So in this case, main camera. The renderer, so what is the render engine you want to use? We want to use Line Render 9000. Now we're only gonna be focusing on these two types of um, render engines, the 3D Light and the scripted 3D Light render engine. Those are only two we're gonna be focusing on. We're not gonna be focusing on any of these three. These are not required. Then you've got disable depth of field. If you use a depth of field on your camera, um, you wanna disable it, tick that. If you've got geometry shells and you don't want them to render the outlines of the geometry shells, you would tick that. So let's move to the line render 9000 render properties. Uh, let's move to pixel samples, X and Y. What does that mean? So in, S, in like simplicity, what it, all, what it means is the higher number you have, which goes with the 32, the more kind of like clearer the lines will be. So the less jagged um, outlines you would have. And obviously you increase this to very, very high, like 32, your render times will increase significantly, significantly, even with the 3D light render engine, something to consider. Um, in the manual, I believe it says something like six to 10 is fine. So I stay between six to 10 um, pixel samples for X and Y, I use about eight. I found that to be fine, to be fine but something you, you may want to experiment with. With the line color, again, quite self-explanatory. When we hit the render button, um, the outlines will be black. Um, if you want to choose different colored outlines, you can do that. I'm boring, so I'm gonna leave it as black. Then we've got the line width here. Um, again, very straightforward. The bigger the number, the thicker the lines. Um, so again, experiment with that. How thick do you want the lines? You don't want it too thick. Um, it really depends on what kind of effect you're going for. So experiment with that. Line edge threshold is basically the details of the lines. So. The lower the threshold, the more detailed lines you'll get for um, for the main camera, for the Fresnel, and for the edge blend. Um, that's what you'll get for that. Um, something to experiment with. Um, so I think in the actual manual, something like 0 0.2 for the main camera, the main outlines is what is kind of recommended as a default. I'm gonna leave it as 0 0.5 just to show you what it looks like. And then we got this section here which specifically kind of focuses on what it's going to use to create those lines. So use color ID materials, render lights, render shadows. So in this case, our main camera, we do not want to render the shadows. We do not want to render the lights. We want to use those color IDs that we've just created to, to tell this main camera to use that color IDs to create the outlines. So that's what we want to do. So the main camera is I would recommend to use only for color IDs, right? Once you get those color IDs for everything in your scene, that is what your main camera should be used for. The lights and shadows are only used for the shadow uh, opacity cam. So, all right, so we're not gonna use this for anything else. Now let's move on to the bottom here, the settings here that we're not going to use really, but I'll go through it very briefly, very quickly. The composite passes are basically going to 
take these renders. So let's say we had all these tick, one, two, three, four, five. We had all these tick. It's just basically gonna give you one file, right? It's gonna give you one file with all those layers, all those passes, all these four passes in there to create like a, a one a one um, one file basically. So all these render passes are gonna be comp composited together to create one file. Again, that doesn't give you much control. We're not gonna use this, so we're gonna untick this, right? We're gonna untick to say, no, I don't want you to create one file at the end of it. I want you to give me the separate file so I can take it into my favorite photo editing software and do my own composite uh, composition of those layers. Uh, again, right at the bottom here, quite self-explanatory. Save settings, saves the settings. And when you click the render button, then it actually saves the settings as well. So it, it saves settings and then it does the render. So let's do that right now. So because this is the first time I have um, loaded this scene, it's gonna do is optimizing images. This is what 3D Light does. So this is um, this also depends on the in, in your scene how many like items you have in your scene, how many objects and things. The more images it will have to optimize. So something to consider when you're doing that. The first time it does this, this is the first time it does this. Um, afterwards, when we go through the tutorial, it will just go through and do those render passes straight away because it doesn't need to do this. It only does this once. One thing that needs to be mentioned is the 3D Light engine uses your CPU to render. It does not use your GPU. It is not designed to use GPU. So you're like right now I can hear the fans on my CPU, uh, my computer speeding up because it's using CPU um, to do those renders. So it's something to consider if you're going to be doing those like high quality renders, pixel sizes, uh, the pixels uh, size X and Y, you're going to whack up to 32. Your CPU is going to take a hit on that and your computer will slow down because it's using CPU to do that. So it's going through now, it's doing those render passes. This is the first one. This is the tune two-tone cam, which is gonna give us that kind of like cartoonistic kind of um, render. And then it's gonna go and do the second pass, which is the main camera, which is gonna give us those outlines that we defined earlier with the color ID. So it's not gonna take that long. It should, shouldn't take that long, probably like 20 seconds or something like that. Um, I guarantee you there is no IRA render that you can get done in 20 seconds unless it's like really, really low settings. But this is the difference between uh, 3D light and uh, iRay. iRay is realism, so you spend that extra time doing, uh, doing those extra um, iterations of that uh, render engine. Whereas line render, we're just trying to get the outlines. Right, so that's done. Let's jump into my LR9K folder, show you what that looks like. So here we've got the Tune two-tone cam and it's black. You're probably wondering why nothing happened. Because there's no light in my scene, so when you're using the 3D light render engine, you must have light in your scene. There is no light in my scene. That's why that's black. We will short that, we will sort that out in the tutorial. I'll show you the different light, lighting methods that work and um, you can use each one of those to create the effect you want. And then here we've got the main camera here. So this is the color ID that we just did. As you can see, this is one that I forgot to get rid of. So one I did earlier in my, in my practice sessions. So you can see the red pants and the blue um, tags here. When I go to the next one here, you can see how clearly defined these outlines are. This is the power of color ID. So you're not like letting the, the render engine kind of figure out where the lines are. You are telling Line Render 9000 and that main camera, hey, these, these particular items, you see these different colors, they are two separate objects. Therefore, I need you to render those out as different objects and different outlines. That's the power of color ID. So something that I highly recommend you do, uh, color IDs, it takes time, right? The more things you have in your scene, so the more things you have in your scene, like here, the more things you have in your scene here, the longer it's gonna take for you to do that, but I guarantee it'll be worth it. I'll show you uh, towards the end of the tutorial what that looks like, how, how psychedelic it looks, but what great results you can have. So I want to go through the procedure, the workflow of how to do color IDs. So what is recommended is for each section of clothing, you go through and you do the color ID of clothing first. So any clothing your character is wearing or characters, if you have multiple characters, focus on that. Focus on the characters first. So focus on the clothing, getting the, the kind of like contrasting color IDs. So do that first. That's your first main port of call. Once you've done that, you've kind of like you've done a few renders of that main camera ID, color ID, making sure all those line art, the, 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 the lines are clearly defined. You're getting everything. Then move on to the skin. 
So let's move on to the skin here. I want to show you. So the skin, I'm going to just move onto the skin of my character. Let me just click on his surfaces. Okay. Let me go find my character. There he is. Right. So surfaces, um, I want to go to the arms because that's where the hands are. And I'm going to give it a color ID. So I'm going to give it a color ID of, let's say, purple. Okay, purple. Um, actually, his hands are there near. His hands are near the the. Um, so if your hands, for example, are overlapping a particular section, like I know these are red, the pants. I may want to choose a different color. So purple is fine; it's not overlapping. But um, we can choose something else, like green, for example. That's more of a contrasty color than red and blue. So if it's overlapping, I'll still get those outlines. And you would do that for each section. So you would go through. Um, the each section, which is basically you would just go through like the, the, the face, uh, the torso, the head. This is for Genesis 8.1 character, but mind you, so there are different surfaces. But if it was a Genesis 8 character, do the same thing, right? You go through each surface and give it a different, uh, give it a color ID that is not going to, it is going to be contrasting to the clothing of the color ID. So, for example, let me just do the... Um, we will do my character's uh, legs here because it's got the same color as the red. So I'm going to do green for this as well. So you will see that it will show up. All right, so let's run the, the script for that. So I don't want the two-tone one. I just want the main camera here. And I'm just going to change, I'll leave it as one, that's fine. I'm going to leave everything else as it is and do render. So you can see how fast this render really is because it's already done the kind of optimizing images and it's just gonna fly through so fast. So those of you that don't have powerful uh, computers, this could be an option for you in terms of creating your kind of like cartoonistic comic renders if you wanna go in that direction. This is something, it's an option, right? Options are great. So the more options you have to do something, uh, the more likely you are to able to achieve your goal. All right, so let's go to the LR9K folder. So here it is. All right. So here you can see um, the um, green here that I did. All right. For the for the hand that you can see, and for the uh, for the, the the part of the kind of like foot that was showing there. And if I move across, you can see how it's created the outline because of that. you can see how powerful that is in terms of um, creating the having full control over the lines. Cause that's what we're working on first. You want to focus on the lines. Do not worry about coloring anything like that. That comes later on. So the next part um, is the, you can look at the face. So if you wanted, say for example, the chin here, uh, you wanted the chin here, you can give the, your face a different color. So um, for example, let's go with green again, since there's nothing for me to worry about regarding the colors. And then if I wanted the ear outline, a more defined ear outline, I would choose a different color. So I kind of green because I won't get that ear outline. So I can choose a opposite color. Let's say opposite color to green could be dark blue here. All right, um, that's fine. So I'm doing that. If I wanted to be very specific, for example, like this one here, you've got, you can see the fingernails here, right? You can see the fingernails. And if she wasn't wearing the shoes, you can see the toenails. So you could do the same there. So for fingernails and uh, toenails, I would have to choose a different color. Now I know that my hand and my le uh, legs are green. So I need a, an opposite color. So here, a blue, okay. Is an opposing color to green. Fine. So you can see how we're working methodically. We're, we're doing the clothing first and then we're gonna do the skin and we can go to like finer details, like the face, the ears, the fingernails. Um, what I want to move on to now is the eyes. So let me just get my uh, perspective camera here. Just move into the eyes. Okay, how do we get the eyes? How do we get this, right? How do we get these here like that? How do we do that? So let's, uh, let's show you how to do that. So let's turn this around. Here we go. Okay. So with Genesis 8, Genesis 8.1 um, and Genesis 8, this will work for Genesis 8 as well, uh, your character. Um, what I would do is you've got here in the surfaces tab, you've got cornea and you've got eye moisture. So I'm just gonna um, remove that search filter there. Cornea and eye moisture, you wanna um, click on both of these and you wanna remove the cutout opacity for both of these. So
So down here, scroll down, cut opacity, it's already been removed. You wanna remove this, right? It'll be at one. You wanna bring it down to zero because this affects the the eye, the eye, line of the eyes, the outlines, to get those pupils and to get the, um, the pupils and to get the iris. So now what we can do is we can go to the iris here, click on the iris. Uh, I'm gonna type in L on 9K just to get the filter back here. And for the iris, um, I need to have a different color. So I know that my face is, I think my face is blue, is green. Cool, so my iris color can be, uh, needs to be an opposing color, right? An opposite color, so let's say blue. My pupil color cannot be blue, so it's gotta be a different color. Um, and we're gonna go with red. Cool, so that's done. And also you wanna think about the eyebrows, uh, sorry, the eyelashes. So the eyelashes here, when I click on the eyelashes here, which is a separate section here, eyelashes here. Um, we want a different color if you wanna show them. So for this one here, you can see the eyelashes were shown here. So they chose a different color. So I can't have, I think my face is green, wasn't it? So I can't have green for my eyelashes. So I need to have a different color. I could probably get away with something like pink. That's, or we can go purple actually, we can go purple, that's fine. So you gotta think about colors and things like that. I can actually do the lips if I wanted to do that. So let me go to lips just for fun. We can have a bit of fun. Um, I know that this is green, is it? Yep, so for my lips, uh, I can have blue. Here, yeah. fantastic. Okay, so that's kind of like the the workflow regarding the um, the clothing first, then the skin, and you can go to a bit more details: lips, fingernails, uh, particular sections of this of the face. So if you wanted this underline of this chin here, you can do that as well. So let me just run that render to show you what it looks like. So run the render. So here it is that what we just did earlier, defining the eyes, the lips, the fingernails and everything. As you can see how powerful this uh, color ID is. We are literally defining every part of the body here where we can get those beautiful lines. And I'll show you that one, how it looks like. See how we've got the lips here. We've got the, the kind of outline of the ear, the outline of the chin here, the face. You can see how powerful it is. We've even got the fingernails here. This is the powerful option of using color IDs. It takes a bit of time, but it's worth it. Um, this is what it is. So don't worry about it. we haven't got the nose here. That's what the Fresnel and what the Edge Blend camera does. They're bringing those details. We don't need to worry about that. They're bringing those details for us. So the next part of our workflow is going to be the hair, specifically this Morley hair that I'm using here, the Morley hair. And as you can see from this uh, image here, it's not very detailed hair as you can see, right? The thing with cartoon hair, it's not detailed. It's very simplistic. That's what we need to think about when we are creating our cartoonistic kind of renders or doing any kind of line artwork. We need to create simplistic hair. And one of the ways we do that is by the transparency map, also known as the cutout opacity map, um, to get that simplicity. So let's jump back into Dance Studio. What do we mean by this? So if you have a look at our, our kind of like hair here, we can see there's different strands, right? Different parts of the hair. And when we, do the, when we do the actual main kind of like outlines render of this, it's very detailed here. So let's go and do that. So the first thing I need to do with this here is I need to add a color ID because I want to control it. So I need to go to the Morley hair here um, and here the color ID. So LR 9K, the hair, the scalp, all of it. I need to highlight it all. And I need to give it a different color. So I'm just trying to remember what the colors were. Uh, we had blue and green here. So we can have red for the color of the color ID of the hair. So let's go back to Dash Studio. I can have red, which won't interfere. All right, so let me just run that very quickly. Render, won't take time. So this is to do with any hair you have. So the more complex the hair in terms of the complexity, the bit more difficult it's going to be, but you can do it. You can make it look simplistic. I'm gonna show you how to do this, like a very, very quick way of doing it. Obviously take more time if you want the really, really simplistic kind of hair. So just wait a second. I can hear my fans right now speeding up because again, um, this is using my CPU to do the rendering, does not use GPU. 
So let me go, let me close these windows here. Let's go back here. Here is a new one. So here's the redness that we've got, and this is our outline. You see the outline here. So you can see, like, you, you can see the kind of like edges here. They are, they're not like simplistic like this one here, right? They're not like um, here, right? Simplistic. We need to make it more simplistic. How do we do that? So let's go and do that right now. So inside Dash Studio here, what we need to do is click on hair one. There's three sections to this hair. Some hair, um, especially the later hair, the more kind of like really, really high quality hair have like several material zones. So there could be like um, hair one, hair two, side. This could be like cap. There's cap, which we're not going to worry about. There'll be like uh, side hair or whatever, right? There's different material zones for that hair. So you just need to focus on those. Don't worry about the, the, the cap or the scalp in this case it's called. We don't have to worry about that. That's just, that's just something that uh, show, helps Dash Studio to attach the hair to the head of the character. We want to focus on the other sections. So in this case, it's hair one, hair two in this particular example. So we need to go down here and we need to go where it says um, cut out opacity. This is what we need to focus on. So we need to open this particular map into our, or this texture, whatever you want to call it, into our uh, photo editing software. So I'm going to click here and I'm looking for APR more trans.jpg. So click on browse. So it's going to take me straight to that folder. So I'm looking for that uh, APR more trans I think it's this one here let's just do a preview yep yeah. so I want to right click on this I'm gonna open with Photoshop should open in Photoshop click open image cool okay so this is the original texture we do not want to save over this so be very mindful when you do this do not save over this um, otherwise it will save over the original just be very mindful of that. So the reason why we have that complex here is because you can see the strands here. They are very detailed. There's too much detail. We need to make it more simplistic. And um, I'm going to show you a quick method on how to do this. So sometimes with some of these opacity maps, you will have like um, like a, a fading effect. So where it's kind of very bright in one section, but then it fades out here. We don't want that. We want like very simplistic kind of um, representation of the cutout. That's what we want. So the kind of very kind of like really brute force method of doing this is to create a new layer. Um, with this new layer, I want to make it black as well, the background, because it is going to be our opacity map, uh, transparency map, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're just going to reduce the opacity here so we can see underneath that layer. And then I'm going to use this uh, polygonal tool here. And all I'm going to do is like literally just create, go around this, go around this really quickly. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to be nice and neat about it. I'm just going to create that there, that selection. And then I'm going to do shift and F5. Oh, sorry, shift and F5. And I want to fill that in white. All right, that's all I want to do. Now, don't worry about this. It's, it's kind of great because the opacity is up, is, is down. So when I put the opacity back up, you'll see that's what we want. So I'm just going to bring it down. And that's what I'm going to do, right? That's what I'm going to do for each of these. So I'm not going to be like clever about it or kind of like very, uh, very, say, very, you know, careful with it. I'm just going to, I want it like done, right? I want it, um, I want this to be simple. I want to get rid of the, the, I want to get rid of the details. And this is the, the kind of the, the easy way to do it. Now, obviously, um, you would, uh, Different hair, you need a different effect, so you may need to, uh, you know, dis basically uh, discover what works for that particular hair type. But for this hair type, this works. This works for this hair type. I'm not going to do all of these. So what I would do is, once I did all of these, um, I would uh, obviously turn the opacity up, and I would have more of more uh, of these uh, cutouts here. And then what I'm going to do is just unselect that last layer. I don't want that last layer, the bottom layer. And I'm going to do file, save as, um, I'm going to save it in my, for example, my LR9K folder here. And I don't want it as, uh, for, as a Photoshop file, I want it as a JPEG 
or a PNG, it doesn't really matter. So as you can see, I've already got one here, but I'll, I won't save over it. I'm just gonna just call it number two here. We're not gonna use that one, we're gonna use simple. This one I did earlier. So save that, okay, cool. So that's what you would do with creating that, getting rid of the detail and putting in the kind of like simplicity of that hair. Again, it requires discovery, requires for you to experiment a bit to get the right effect that you want. Um, so take your time with that. So let's go back into Dance Studio. So what I need to do now is for the hair and hair one section, the hair two section, the material zones, I'm gonna to go to the cutout opacity, I'm gonna click here and I'm going to add the one I did uh, earlier, which is going to be in, yeah, which is the one I did earlier is this one here. As you can see, they're very similar. Open. All right. So that's to remove the details out of the hair because cartoonistic hair does not have those details. It does not have the fine details. It's very simple details. Um, as you can tell from watching any cartoon, uh, you watch, you know, name, name me a cartoon, The Simpsons, for example. The hair in there is not very detailed, right? It's very simple. Um, South Park even, very simple, right? Whatever cartoon you watch, you'll look at the hair and it's pretty simple, it's not detailed. Cool, so let's do the, the render for that as well, I'll just show you the difference. So render that. So that's the kind of workflow there. You wanna start with the clothing, then go to the skin, then maybe the finer detail of the skin, which includes the kind of fingernails, the mouth, the, the eyes, and then finally you would move on to the hair and create that uh, simple hair basically. That's what we're trying to do. Um, and then once you've done the actual characters, you would move on to the background, right? So whatever background you have here, in this case we have this, I would go through and I would uh, use put color IDs on each of these. I would put color IDs on each of the sections that I want the outline so I can control the outlines. So let's see what that looks like. So there's the hair. There's the new hair, right? Um, where is the old hair? There's the old one. You can see kind of it's frayed edges here. The original hairline without that original, with the original cut opacity with their details. And then when we move here, you can see we've got finer lines, as you can see now, because we removed the details. That's why it's very important to do that. Um, if that's what you're looking for, if you, if you want the details, fine. Leave the, leave the cut opacity in the original one. But if you want that more, kind of like more cartoonistic uh, render look, then you're gonna have to, uh, then I, it's it's, it's uh, ideal to go and do that that extra step of uh, going through the cut opacity and doing the, creating the simple simpleness of that hair, making it more simple. So now we're gonna move on to getting those detail lines. So what I'm gonna do is open up the tutorial two that I did with all the kind of outlines are done for everything, with all the color IDs are done for everything to show you what it looks like and to show you what difference it makes with the color IDs for every item in this scene. So here we are with the updated scene. Nothing has changed, but everything inside this scene has now got a color ID, which means every item here, every background, everything that I can put a color ID to, I did. So we can get those very, very nice defined outlines. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go to the LR9K auto render. And for this one, we're gonna be just using the main camera here only. And for this, I'm gonna use line edge threshold 0.2. I'm gonna use that because we are using the color ID materials. So we're using the color ID to define the contrast between each section of each uh, particular clothing, background, item, etc. And this will create those clearer outlines with our line edge threshold being lower. It's gonna create those very, very nice, detailed, clean outlines that we want. So let me just hit the render button here to show you what that looks like. And then we'll move on to the Fresnel camera and then we'll move on to the edge to show you what they pick up. And then we will eventually, then we will move on to the two-tone and then we will finally get to the shadows and lighting or lighting and shadows, yeah. So this will take around about between 25 and 30 seconds, uh, which is pretty quick, even with CPU rendering. There we go. So let me go and show you how psychedelic this looks. I'm gonna actually take this into Photoshop to show you how psychedelic this actually looks. 
So let me just put these on top of each other. Okay. So you can see how psychedelic it looks. Every item inside here or every surface has got a uniquely defined color ID, which will give us these wonderful lines. So when I turn this off and I turn on the, actually I need to put a layer here, sorry. Let me just put this uh, layer at the bottom, which is going to be our base layer. Uh, white, that's great. So when I turn it on, you can see how great it looks. So this is the importance of color IDs. Take the time to do that so you can get those detailed definitions. It took me a very long time to do it, but it's worth it because look at these beautiful lines we've got now. Fantastic. So that is the power of color IDs. Highly recommend you use that to create your outlines. So let's now move on to creating um, the more detailed lines so we can get our nose and other features of our characters, of, of everything here with the Fresnel. So here we are back inside Dash Studio. We need to double click on the LR9K Auto Render. And we're gonna be using the Fresnel and the Edge Blend. We want those detailed lines. And for both of these Fresnel and the Edge Blend cameras, we're gonna be using color IDs only. Again, we're gonna use color IDs because we want those, the clear defined lines regarding that. We want those extra lines using the color ID to help us to get those um, detail lines that we want. So this will take a while to do. So what I'm gonna do is fast forward it and get to the renders. I'm gonna put them into Photoshop so you can see what each of them look like. So inside Photoshop, here we have over here on the right hand side here, if you have a look at the, the layers, I've taken off every other layer. I've got the reflected uh, v, v lines, uh, for now reflected V lines and the camera lines. So this is what the output you get. The output you get is you'll get this kind of like shading output and then you'll get the, the lines output here. So what, how the Fresnel camera works is it looks at the, the particular shading here and it figures out the edges, the details from that. So that's how that works. It's got nothing to do with the lighting or anything. It's just the way the camera's positioned and how everything looks to it. That's how you get these particular lines here. So the way the edge blend camera works is very similar. You get these kind of like, you get this one here, which is a very, like the different gray tones here. And from these gray tones, it figures out what detail lines it's going to create. So the more, the lower the edge threshold you do, the kind of more detail lines you would get for this particular section, for these kind of, for these particular edge blend and the, the Fresnel. The more lower threshold you do for that, the threshold you will get more detailed lines and it will pick more of those kind of uh, details. And this is what the edge blend looks like by itself. So as we add these, so that's the edge blend, as we add the reflective V lines, and then as we add the main camera line, you can see things start to look a bit better start to look a lot more detailed, uh, more cartoonistic. We just haven't got the colors yet, which we're gonna be working on now, uh, very shortly. And again, what we could do is say, for example, because we got full control over this, we can say, all right, uh, hey, these edge lines are a bit too much. I wanna just decrease them, right? Use the opacity slider here to decrease them. Or these uh, Fresnel uh, reflect uh, reflected V lines are too much, right? I can remove that. So you've got ultimate control um, over each layer, which is the great thing about this tool. Um, it gives you that control. And again, this is what the pros do uh, with the, with iRay, this is what they do. They do render passes. And this is how they create those wonderful uh, renders that you, you, you too, you want to create as well. That's how they do it. It takes work, it takes time to do it, but in the end you get a fantastic result. So well worth doing this, using this method for iRay and for using it uh, if you were gonna do it with Line Render 9000. Let's now do, let's now work on the lighting. So let's get that Toon Tone Cam going and let's get the lighting. So let's talk about lighting. So because we're using 3D light, uh, lighting is very different the way it works compared to the way it works with iRay. So this is something I'm trying to figure out myself. It's not my forte lighting with 3D light. But there are only four methods that will work with Line Render 9000 to get your lighting. And that is, the first method is the camera. So if we go to our normal camera here and we go to parameters, let me go find the camera, there it is. We go to headlamp, it's to turn the headlamp on, right? So generally in my settings, I always turn the headlamp off automatic. So if I turn it to on, 
we'll get some lighting now from the headlamp. That's one method of doing it, of getting the lighting for the two-tone camera. So we can actually see what's happening. The other way of doing that is you can go to, I'll turn that off actually, and then we'll have to do preview lights. Um, the other way is to add a distant light. So create new distant light, there it is, uh, accept. And then if I turn off the preview lights, you can see the distant light here. Um, and then we can rotate the distant light to get the effect we want, okay. So distant light, that distant light. What you will need to do with distant lights is you will need to go to in the parameter section for lighting. For the shadow type, you would have to change that to ray traced to get the shadows. Um, that's when we want to get the shadow shadows. So when we get it, actually we'll look at the shadows now and then we'll look at two tone later, but we'll, we'll do the shadows now. So again, lighting, very important, or you can use, you can use the distant light to do that. That's absolutely fine. So I'm not going to use distant light. Um, the other way to do it is to create a spotlight. So a new spotlight, um, add the spotlight in, um, go to my spotlight here in my camera and I can, you know, move it into the place where I want it. Okay, I can move it where I want it. And I have a feeling that my render settings are sent to IRA. So let me just delete this spotlight. I need to set the render settings back to scripted 3D light. Because when you add the spotlight, you will see the spotlight has different options here. So if you look at the right hand side here, see these options? They're very different to what you have in IRA when you do the IRA settings. So this is the difference between 3D light and IRA. You do not get all these options. So maybe lighting where you want it to get a dramatic effect or whatever you're looking for. So let me see what that looks like. Kind of like, uh, I guess that will do. So let's go back to my main camera here. Let's see what we get. Okay. So again, shadow type here for the spotlight, ray traced. And then we can, we get options there. We can have intensity. We can make it brighter, darker using that. Um, and then we can do the spread angle, right? We can change the kind of, it shows you kind of like a preview of what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to whack the intensity up on this. Maybe spread angle about 40, something like that. Uh, again, with this, we don't know what it's going to look like. We can't do an IRA preview or anything like that. You have to literally hit the render button and see what it looks like. So the shadows may not be great, but we'll see. And then the other way you can do lighting before we move on to actually doing the shadow opacity lighting, show you how that works, um, is you can use the, if we go to smart content here and we just remove the LR9K and we expand this section here and go to lights, is to use this, the Ube, Uber environment to base. So you use that, or you can use this one here, the bounce light. So we can double click that and there's my light here, which is more like, a, it's like dome lighting. So it's very soft lighting. You can't control the direction or anything like that. It's, uh, you, it's basically, it's kind of like, a, it's, it's kind of like having a HDRI light, uh, if you want to think of the equivalent. So obviously you don't want this light in the scene. You don't want to see it. So you would need to go to, scale and the scale that back so you don't have it so you can't see it in the scene you want it here uh that means it's still it's still there the the ira the uber environment light is still there and there are like extra settings here where you can change so generally you are ambient no ray tracing uh, ambient light which is like your hdri you can play with these settings i haven't played with these so you can play with those. Again, you can change the settings here as well. They will affect the way things, uh, the way the lighting looks. But I'm gonna show you Spotlight. So let's go to Spotlight here. And uh, I'm gonna just leave it like that. Again, you can change the shadow intensity if you want your softer shadows or the kind of shadow intensity and the softer shadow softness here. Like you can do all these things in here. I'm not gonna go into those details. So, 
We've got my camera here. I'm going to get my uh, lights now, my uh, shadow shadows. So LR9K, all files. There it is. I don't need the Fresnel, so I'm going to take that. I don't need the edge blend, shadow opacity. Now for this one, we don't use 3D light. We use the line render at 9000 script. Uh, that is fine the way it is. Uh, we want to use render lights and render shadows. We do not want to use color uh, ID materials because we want those shadows. And then we just hit render. So this, this is what will happen. Sometimes you'll get an error message here, like this here. Do not worry about this error message. It will go ahead and complete that render. You will get two renders from that. You'll get the shadow and you'll get the lines. We're going to use both of them. Uh, so don't worry if you get if you get if you get any error messages like this, it will still create that uh, that that uh, render at the end of it. So if you do see an error message, do not worry, it will still do it. So hopefully this won't take too long. Obviously, when you use a three D light engine to do the two tone cam, it will take long to do that render. So when we get there, I'm gonna just fast forward that because uh, it will take a while to do that. So let's uh, take this and show you what this looks like inside here. So here they are, these two here. Opacity lines, shadow opacity cam lines and the actual shadow. So I'll get this, drag them in here, tick, tick. All right, and there we go. Um, that's how it is, that's what it will look like. So I'm actually not liking this because I can't even see my creature anymore. So what you would do with these two, is you would merge these two layers. So the cam lines and the opacity cam, you would merge these. So I'm gonna take these two and you would do merge. Just those layers, so they're one. Um, I'm actually not liking that, this shadow too much. But actually, no, I don't like that. I don't like the way it's hiding that character. I want to see that character. But you can see how it works, right? This is how it works with your, with your shadow here. Um, and then this is the the shadow coming off the grill. The these the the the, the um the other where the where the light is coming through is coming off that. This is the creating this weird effect on the legs here. So I actually don't like that. I'm gonna change that. But you can see how great it looks. See the importance of shadows. So without shadows, plain, boring, dull. With shadows, oh, we've got something here now, right? It looks more more different the lighting. So this is the importance of shadows. So let's jump back into Dash Studio. Um, I'm just gonna change where that spotlight's coming from. I don't like that spotlight. Let's see if we have it like this. Yeah, let's do it like this. Uh, camera here, there we go. All right, so that's fine for the spotlight. Again, that's experimentation, where you want the spotlight, what kind of settings you want. That's something for you guys to experiment with. So let's uh, go back to the two tone cam. So we've got our uh, we've got our spotlight here. I do not want to use my spotlight because with the spotlight it will with the three D light two tone cam it will it will do the render with the shadow. I do not want that. So I want to turn my spotlight off. Um, I only want I'm gonna actually use the the camera. So my camera the headlamp on my camera to do this. So I'm going to do on and to get my two tone render. So I'm going to go to my LR9K auto render here. I'm going to turn off, actually we can have shadow opacity because I'm going to do that again anyway. I'm going to run the two tone as well. And we're going to leave 3D light because I want my two tone uh, cam to give me that tunistic effect. I'm going to hit render. This will take a while. So I'm going to fast forward this section and I'm going to jump into uh, Photoshop to show you what it looks like. So after all those renders, we're back inside of Photoshop. So let's have a look at what we've created here. So let's undo everything. So here's our first layer here, which is our two tone cam, which should be the first layer in your, when you're doing your layers, when you're putting everything in order, the bottom layer should always be the two tone cam or the tune camera the bottom layer, so that is our main layer. That's the 3D light render as it is. Then we're gonna have our um, camera lines, which is gonna give us those details. All right, it's gonna give those, you see the before, you can see the after, it's giving us like cartoonistic effect. Now again, if you don't like it, if it's too much, you can always reduce the opacity and say, hey, it's too much, that is up to you. Then we've got the Fresnel reflected V line, so I turn that on. 
and you can see a bit more detail there. You can see something jumping out there, a bit more definition of the details. If you have a look, kind of, if you have a look at this section here where there's kind of like lighting here, you can see the definition there. Then we've got the edge blend line. So this is like layer number four now in your stack of layers, render passes. So you can see the difference here, just a little bit more detail. It's not much really, if, even if I whacked at 200 opacity, there's a little bit of detail you'll get uh, sometimes. So you sometimes you may just want to have one or the other. You may not want uh, the, the Fresnel, you just may want the edge blend, or you may just want the Fresnel. That's absolutely fine, you don't need to have both. I'm just showing you, you can have both if you want to. And then the top one is usually gonna be your shadow, opacity, uh, the two lines and the cam. Uh, renders merge together those layers to create your shadows. So that's what a shadows look like. Looks really cool actually, doesn't look too bad. So again, we can control these. It's all about control, having that control that we don't have in, in Sunside Dash. We can, we can control the, the shadow, right? We can control like how much we want it. Do we want it a bit lighter or do we want it darker, right? We can choose what we want. And then um, when we get to, you know, like, if, you're, uh, if you're very, very good with your photo editing, and you understand masking as well. You can mask particular areas. So um, again, it's not a Photoshop tutorial, but you can mask a particular area and say, hey, actually I want these really, really cool shadows here. So I'm just gonna paint in those shadows. I want these shadows here. I don't want the shadow here. And you can do really, really cool things like that. Go into a bit more detail. That is Line Render 9000 uh, in a nutshell. You can create wonderful art like this, cartoonistic art that looks really, really good. Takes a bit of work. But it's definitely worth it if that is what you're looking for, the effect you're looking for, and how we recreate how we created it. So again, you start off with those color IDs, very, very important. Let's show you those color IDs, right? Very psychedelic color IDs here. Takes time, is worth it, which will give you these wonderful outlines here. And then from that, you could get your outlines for your, your Fresnel, and then you can get your outlines for your edge bend lines if you want even more detail. Again, play with those line thresholds to get more detail if you want to. And then you would um, do the two-tone. We'll start putting the colors now. And then finally, you wanna add the shadows. You add the shadows however, however you want to add the shadows uh, to your scene. So that's Line Render 9000 in a nutshell. Quite a lot to take in, but very, very powerful tool. Highly recommend for you guys to use it, to try it out. If you want to support this channel, there are two ways to do this. The first way is to head on to palmybanner.com, link in the description down below, where you can download chapter one of Tiger Dragon, The Rebirth, an inspiring female superhero story, helping you to achieve your grand ambitions. So if you want to achieve your grand ambitions, download this story, have a read, 24 pages to get you started with the story of Ayame, our protagonist here. And uh, the main story all centers around our being, right? Our reason for existence. What is our reason to be here on earth? That's what we're all trying to figure out. This story is gonna help you so you can release the kami within you, that spirit inside of you that everybody has, that soul, whatever you wanna call it, right, is in, the, is in there and you've gotta let that soul, that spirit shine in order for you to achieve your grand ambitions. And that's what this story is all about. So go on and head on down and read this story. It's gonna help you and inspire you. Chapter one, by the way, for that. Um, if you're not into graphic novels, that's fine. You just wanna focus on Dash Studio and create the best renders you can. If you scroll down here, I've got version 6.1 of the Dash Studio Ultimate Beginner's Lighting Guide. Um, this is gonna help you with IRA rendering inside Dash Studio, get you started so you can start creating awesome renders like this image here. So that's for you there as well. I've got your bulk covered there. And the second way you can support this channel is to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any more videos that can help you on your journey to Master Dash Studio. Don't forget to leave a comment down below as well. Um, I'd love to see your comments, any insights you have regarding Line Render 9000 that I, haven't, that I haven't talked about in this tutorial that can help others because that's what this channel is all about, is helping you to achieve your goals with Dash Studio. And when you achieve your goals with Dash Studio, you feel better about yourself, you feel inspired, you feel like you are creating something that is valuable to you. And that's what this channel is all about, is building your self-esteem, your self-worth, so you can go and achieve your grand ambitions. So until next week's video, if you want to achieve your grand ambitions, you must commit to mastery.